Hi everybody, happy Friday. We're gonna be talking about some family stuff, families of the Bible, mostly dysfunctional families of the Bible. Because I think it's so funny, a lot of people will say, well, I wanna have, you know, traditional biblical family values. And I'm like, oh, are you reading the same Bible that I am? Because those families in the Bible are pretty crazy and pretty dysfunctional in a lot of ways. And they have a lot of interesting, um, very human traits about them. And I think that that's why they're so relatable because all of our families are a little dysfunctional sometimes or a little bit off kilter and that is okay. So some of the funny families and dysfunctional families, we've got, of course, we've got Abraham and we've got um, Isaac and Rebecca. We've got um, a, a whole family dynasty that seemed to to just span from Abraham. Um, we've got marriages and, and um, secrets and, and um, oh, you can't marry this daughter. You've got to marry this daughter with Leah and Rachel, the, the kind of ri sibling rivalry. But then we've also got um, Joseph and his brothers and all the sibling rivalry there with all the brothers. So there's a lot of interesting dynamics. Uh, then there's Naomi and Ruth and the kind of daughter to mother figure sort of uh, dynamic that's really powerful if you want to talk about female um, relationships and female family members and learning to uh, trust a family member. Uh, there's some really cool stuff in there, but none of it's perfect. And none of it is sort of what I think a lot of us would want to pass on to our children about. This is what a good family should look like. A lot of the biblical families are just people, just like us, but yet they live together. They, um, they kind of support each other in a lot of different ways throughout their faults. And throughout the process, they're just trying to figure out how to love God and how to serve God the best way that they can. And I think that's a great message for all of us today. I know a lot of us today, families are looking very different. Families are kind of coming together in a lot of ways. A lot of households are expanding. I know a lot of my friends and me included our families, you know, we're all kind of congregating and quarantining together in one household. And some, some of my friends have uh, other people who are staying with them and their household is changing. Uh, their family dynamic is changing. And that's okay. Right now, we all need to stick together and find a way to find connection and um, that kind of relationship uh, that we need right now in this time of, of trial and struggle and confusion. And uh, I think that that's a really great and beautiful gift to have. So if there's a time when you're at home and you're with your family and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I cannot stand one more second with these people around me, just remember that a lot of the biblical figures probably felt the same way. Uh, a lot of them did not super like their siblings a whole lot. If we take the example of Leah and Rachel, they're both sisters, but there was sort of, the Bible kind of tries to make them a little bit contentious at times. Um, they're both wanting the favor of their husband, their sisters, and they're married to the same man. That's pretty tricky. That's pretty challenging. So just think, hey, if the Bible figures can somehow make it work, I think we can make it work too. Because they're just people just like us. Uh, and I think that's a really encouraging message to remember that we're all just human and we're trying to figure it out together. So um, as you go out um, into your weekend, try to just remember that you're doing the best you can and that's okay. You do not have to be perfect. You do not have to have all the answers. You do not always have to say the right thing to the family members that you love. It's okay to sometimes get frustrated with each other. I know sometimes living in a, a close quarters with families can be rough, or sometimes maybe you're missing your family. Maybe you're spread out and you haven't seen some of your family members for a while. Um, maybe just let them know this weekend, hey, I'm thinking of you and I love you and I hope you're doing well. Uh, I think that sometimes a little simple message can go a really long way. So let us close with prayer and just remember your family and all your loved ones this day. Will you pray with me? 
God of our humanness, you make us so fragile in so many ways and yet also so strong. Remind us of those who are put in our lives for a reason. Those people who we call family, whether they're by blood or by just a close God-given friendship or connection. We give you thanks for those that we call family. And we remember that the biblical figures were not perfect in every way other than Jesus. And that we are human too. And you love us so much in our humanness. Thank you for life. Thank you for family. And thank you for your love. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And I will see you on Sunday. Bye.